Gold is not a market that is prodded by external events. It tends to anticipate the events well ahead of time. Gold as money traces back 2,500 years to a part of Turkey where they first minted gold and silver currency by the, the government at the time. It was 550 BC, okay? It's been money ever since. It's a fairly wise market. It's been money across the globe, not just in Europe or so forth, but you know, go to Africa, South America, wherever. It's money. It's been there a long time. Compare that to the S&P, which has been around since 1957, or the Fed, which has been around 100 years. They're babies, okay? Now, look at what just happened to gold over the last, since December of 2015. The low monthly close on gold in the end of that bear market was $1,060. Between then and the summer of 2020, again, summer 2020, gold doubled. Commodities were still in the hole. They didn't even upturn until October 2020. And so now everybody's looking at commodities and saying, well, why isn't gold exploding? Because gold led. It's the leader. It doesn't wait for these events. It anticipates them. It's in charge, so to speak. I've never been so narrowly focused in terms of what I think is likely to be the winner going forward for the next year or two. Yes, commodities will likely stay up and trend up, some of them even more than they have. I think we look at some of the underpriced commodities, for example, sugar and cocoa. I would also watch natural gas. Those three markets have not gone totally berserk yet, and I think they will. But gold will lead them on a percentage gain basis. It did back in the late 70s during that big bull market in commodities and gold. Gold still led them in terms of percent gain. We think gold and silver, which have been, like you noted, in a corrective process for now over a year and a half of sideways to down, constantly being beat up by Fed news, especially since June of last year when the Fed said we're going to taper. Okay, There have been like four sell-offs in gold that each constituted more than $100 drops but they were all redundant. Meaning you sold it, you made a hundred bucks, it came back up to where it was before they sold it again. They couldn't get it to sustain on the downside. And now we've shot back up and tapped the high again. Silver is also engaged up out of its congestion pattern. It's not evident on the price chart. While commodities might pause for a while because they've had a pretty big gain, the overall commodity complex. In fact, it overshot most of our objectives is so strong. It could easily go into a congestion zone, but we argue it's going to be likely a high level zone, which means stranglehold on a lot of other economic metrics. But it looks like gold and silver ready to re-engage again. And they don't need an external factor. Think of gold as a separate leadership market. And I'll give you one more example of what not to look at. Everybody's looking at commodities saying, why is it gold gone? Well, gold went first. Okay, two, what about the dollar? Everybody thinks the dollar is strong. Well, they're misfocused. If you go back to 2015, December 2015, when gold made its lowest monthly close, that was in 1060, the dollar index, which is overwhelmingly weighted by the euro, by the way, therefore it's a totally distorted index, was at 98.65, 98.65. It's trading at that same price today. Six years later, it's oscillated in a range of about five or six percent above that number and about five or six percent below an extremely narrow range for six years, meaning the dollar has gone nowhere since late 2015. Meanwhile, gold doubled. So even the dollar didn't explain the gold move. Gold doesn't need it. Gold is looking at the monetary degradation of the major currencies, which is a competitive process. Sometimes the dollar degrades more than the euro or the yen and so forth. It's competing garbage, okay? But that's what gold is looking at. And right now, whatever the central banks do in response to a declining asset categories that they want to defend, we argue the flow will not go where they want it to this time. This time it's going to be like the late 70s. They can print all they want, but it's not going to help the stock market. Stock market was a wasteland through 1982 back then, even though the monetary policy was aggressive. It went into gold, into commodities. We think we're in the same situation now. And while T-bonds over the last couple of years have been a competitor to gold, in terms of going up with gold and down with gold in price, 
But in other words, asset managers fleeing the stock market would go and buy T-bonds or buy gold. That's no longer the case. T-bonds are now matching the stock market on the downside. So we're left with one major asset alternative. And I think that's where investors need to start thinking and focusing is on what has been fairly sedate for a year and a half, the gold sector, silver especially, and the gold and silver miners especially. That's where the focus should be. Let's take gold first. If you go back and, and look at the three major bull markets of the last 45, 50 years, you'll find that they go to the bear market low that preceded it, then the bull market peak and measure it. They were all seven to eight fold increases in price. They all replicated each other on a logarithmic scale, so to speak. Well, our bear market low was 1,050 area. Okay, you do the math, what's seven to eight times that? That's just a normal replication of three prior bull markets we've had in the last 50 years, and yet we have fundamentals that are far more exaggerated than they've ever been, both monetary and the downturn in the asset category that's likely to spark more monetary excess. So gold going up to seven to 8,000 is merely echoing the three prior bull markets on a logarithmic scale. And I frankly think that it won't stop there, but let's just say we're gonna do the normal thing, okay? Then look at silver on a ratio base or a percent price of silver versus gold, go back 50 years, and you'll find that there are four times in that four plus decades where silver has reached 3% of the price of gold, twice re reached above there. One time got the 4.5% of the price of gold, and one time it's 6.5% the price of gold. Okay, so let's just say the lower end there, the four peaks, 3% over. Let's say that's sort of where we think maybe it'll, it'll return there again. You know, no big deal. Well, 3% of the current price of gold puts silver at about $60. Okay, if gold ever went to 8,000, the silver could be 240. The issue then is, well, is silver in a position to outperform gold now? Because since 2011, we know it's underperformed. It's gone down a lot more, been more suppressed than gold, uh, and less of a performer. It did pull back in the recent pullback in silver the last year, but the pullback didn't negate the positive trend, and we're now reasserting again. So it looks to us like, one, gold and silver have said, we're out of the congestion mode, we're going to trend upward again. That's net price. Gold is likely, wouldn't surprise us to see it have another normal bull market, despite the abnormal fundamentals that could drive it much further. And silver could go out to its normal 3% eh, over gold again, in which case you're talking price dynamics in silver that would uh, rival the move in Bitcoin in 2020, when Bitcoin went from 10,000 to like 65,000 in nine months, okay? We also think that this next leg up in the gold and silver is likely to be far more dynamic and speedy than what we're used to. In other words, we might end up with days where silver ranges $5 a day and gold ranges $100 a day. Might be routine in the process of the advance. Anyway, but uh, it looks like history is set fundamentally and technically for gold to be the absolute winner here.